I went out earlier on and interviewed Howard Marks, top drug baron, and here is the interview I did. <laughs> I'm here with Howard Marks today, who has um, been billed as Britain's most wanted man. Sounds Should like my mini car. Wait till, <laughs> we'll wait till this goes through. <laughs> <A bit> ironic. <laughs> <laughs> you got this really structured well, actually. <laughs> some I'll, I'll, do my, I'll do my clap again. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get that time. Tell me you're going to bust me, man. <laughs> I'm here today with Howard Marks, who has been described as Britain's most wanted man. How long was that for, that period of time, Howard? Uh, during the time I was a fugitive, I guess, which was six and a half years in the um, 70s, okay, late 70s. How did you find out that you're Britain's most wanted man? Read the headline in the newspaper. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> and that's when you found yeah, out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, your autobiography is called Mr. Nice. Yeah. Now, that always seems a bit strange for a man who's built his fame upon the world of drug smuggling. Mm -hmm. How come you've been perceived as Mr. Nice? Well, as I say, it was the name of one of my false mm. identities, and the choice of that name as opposed to Anthony Tunnicliffe or any other name. Yeah, to call it Mr. Uh, Tunnicliffe would be strange. Yes, for yeah, but the name was deliberately provocative, yeah. So that people could say, no, he's not nice at all, he's nasty. And therefore there'd be debate and uh, stuff like that. So when the vision most people have of like a, a huge drug smuggler would mm -hmm. be your kind of um, scar face man in a white suit sure. sitting by a swimming pool yeah. with um, cocktails. Yeah. Well, did you ever fit that bill? Yeah, probably. You know, for a while, yeah. I mean, I think for a while when I was making ludicrous amounts of money, my lifestyle was, you know, unacceptably flash for sure. And uh, I, you know, spend vast amounts of money on first class airfares, hotel What's suites. What's the most you've ever spent then? Oh God, only you know, thousands of pounds in a night, I suppose. How far away are you from somewhere where you can score? Is there which country are you furthest away from where you can score? Like you could pick up the phone. Could you say say in Manchester you could pick up the phone? Would you be? How many minutes do you think you could be away from making a deal from here? Oh hell, less than five. I should less than five. Yeah. Where's the longest period? Say like. In Pakistan, how long would you be away from a deal there? About five minutes. Five minutes. Is there yeah. any country in the world you're not five minutes away from? Singapore. It? Singapore. Yeah. How long would that be? Uh, well, uh, I would never even try because they have the death penalty. <laughs> 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 you know, it kind of discourages. It's quite hard to get. You were in prison for um, in America for seven years, mm -hmm. and you, you say that was a terrible, terrible experience in America. Well, some of it was, of course. Some of it was very depressing. Uh, you know, I was very saddened by a lot of what I experienced there. But, um, you know, it's quite easy to survive. You know, there's, there's, I mean, I think su there's very little stress there. Mm. At the end of the day, there's no stress at all. Did people know who you were when you were on the inside? Yeah, yeah, and that helped a lot. My notoriety helped. And so did you have people helping you out when you were in there? Yeah, yeah, but uh, generally it is the case in prison that uh, a newcomer, unless his crime is sort of like distasteful, uh, will be welcomed, you know, yeah. in the prison and taken care of. Yeah. So how hard is it? I mean, you, you, again, you see in the drug in the prison films, mm -hmm. you can. It's easy to get drugs on the inside than on the outside. Is that yes, true? Yes, yes, it is. But you see, they uh, test one's urine a lot, and marijuana uh, stays in the bloodstream for about a month, whereas heroin stays in for only one day. So obviously, that influences the drug of choice mm. of uh, prisoners, which means that they take on the whole quite, you know, bad stuff mm. rather than good stuff. So when was the last time you were straight? Was it then? Yes. Yes. As soon as I got out, I mean, I gave up everything when I was in prison, smoking mm. tobacco, smoking hash, sex, I mean, everything. Uh, and when I got out, I reverted to complete debauchery. I mean, <laughs> I've remained there ever since. I, I don't have any money left over from my dope dealing days. Uh, but the house that I bought in Spain, mm. uh, I still have. And has, has there been any attempt to take it off you? Yes, the DEA spent four years trying to confiscate it on the basis that I'd used the telephone there to further my racketeering enterprise. Mm. This confused the Spanish courts. <laughs> Eventually they said, no, no, you can't take it because you made a telephone call from there. So I've still got it. So you never ever wrote, did you ever write anything down on paper when you were doing it all? I did in the early days, but uh, when I got busted with having the accounts of the entire operation in my hand, <laughs> you I, stopped doing I it. stopped doing it. And uh, it's quite easy, you just make sure you pay people off in round numbers. You know, like you only take 500 kilos and you only pay 100 grand. Mm. You don't pay 98,242 or whatever. So would you ever go back to it? Yeah. You would do? Sure. In the right circumstances, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So how many kind of different people were you dealing with at, the, at any one time? 
Uh, according, I don't know, I can't remember. According to the DA, about 300. <laughs> they, they're likely to have exaggerated, but certainly over 100. Yeah. 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 And what was the, what's, the, what's the smallest size you've and what's the biggest size you've ever dealt in? Uh, the smallest size I've ever dealt in is enough to make a joint. Yeah. Or slightly less, actually, in that particular case. Um, the largest uh, amount I've ever been involved with, according to the DA, is 50 tons. According to me, is 30. They exaggerated tons. again, yeah. But I did uh, export 30 tons of Thai weed. How do you Thailand disguise 30 tons of Thai weed? And how high up officials in countries have you ever bribed? How high up does it go in, like, in your kind of your more banana Well, stuff, directly, b directly bribed are very, very few. Mm. Uh, government officers, yes. I've paid government So it goes officers. as high as that? Oh, sure, yeah. But uh, I, will, I, mean, I think prime ministers and presidents have been implicated, but I have no personal yeah. um, memory of paying anything. Everyone who's ever smoked drugs in their life mm. always hits the phase they call the munchies. Yes. Go out and, yes. What is your favourite food that you go out and eat? Oh, uh, I don't go out to eat, actually. I usually get attacked by the munchies at home. Mm. And uh, it's actually lately it's been sugar puffs and milk. <laughs> Seem to satisfy that one. And um, you can't, was it an Oxford, Oxford education you had? Yeah. What, what did you want to do? When, did you want to be a footballer or an astronaut when you were young? And no. no what, did, I, what did you want to be? In a doctor. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a doctor. So I ended up um, being trained to be a nuclear physicist. Yeah. Uh, which I have absolutely no fucking interest in whatsoever. Um, so I uh, then did some postgraduate stuff in philosophy of science, mm. which I was and still am very interested in. Um, and uh, but it didn't give any money, so I became a dope smuggler. So what, what's your philosophy on life now? Is it um, is it for the pursuit of, uh, the pursuit of wealth, or is it for the um, pursuit it's, of happiness? It's whatever the opposite of the pursuit of wealth is. Okay, it's whatever. I mean, I. Uh, my only decision that I made outside of prison was not for money to have any kind of bearing on anything I do. Mm. Uh, I just, basically, you know, I simply do not want to work or play with assholes. And I don't give any other consideration at all. I only work with people I like. And I don't care whether they make me a lot of money or a little bit of money, mm. or none, or cost me. It doesn't matter anymore. So did you ever think in the prison that you would be doing interviews, writing magazine articles, and no. writing a book? No. How has it affected you now, then, this complete change of lifestyle? I like it so far, and I, I think it's enabled me to, like, I don't know, put back something into it. Mm. Right? Like, on the whole, during the days that I was dealing and smuggling, I took more from guys who were smoking than they gave to me, yeah? Mm. You know, I mean, for sure. Uh, I feel that now, given for some reason, uh, I'm quite happy to sacrifice my life for, to legalise marijuana right now, you know, mm. I don't give a fuck. Uh, that that's what I should try to do as hard as I possibly can. And if it requires me to smoke dope in police stations and do anything, I'll do it.